Hello, it's Sarah from Heart Cover Hearts, and I'm here with another, I know, I've lost my mind. This is what happens with uh, shelter in place. This is another of the catch videos. The I'm, I'm kind of calling these, if I can't go to London, I'm going to make London come to me videos. Um, this was, a, it has a little extra oomph to it because it was my birthday at the end of the month and I did a little extra, <laughs> a little extra, uh, to celebrate my birthday. Uh, so I wanted to show all of you this and then also show off the t-shirt that my husband got me. Uh, I think only booktube would know why this is funny. Uh, I am, I, I, if you followed my channel, you know how much I'm a, obsessed with the Mitford sisters. And so when I opened up the package and saw a t-shirt that said Mitford, I just died laughing. He is, he's very, he's just sharp that one. He's a keeper. I'll, I'll keep him. <laughs> all right. So let's get into all of the books that I, that I have purchased. Uh, so, uh, many of these I got off book depository, but I've also been starting to look at some other sources um, because I want some of the stuff is just not available there. And so I'm trying to go deep backlist, really deep backlist in some cases. So let's get started. Uh, first up, I will show you this gorgeous, I mean, isn't it just stunning? This is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. And this is up for uh, the Women's Prize. And I'm going to do a buddy read of this with Judy very shortly. <clears throat> this is, my understanding is it is, yeah, it's on a summer day in 1596, a young girl in Stratford upon Avon takes to her bed with fever. Her twin brother, Hamnet, searches everywhere for help. Why is no one home? My understanding is this is uh, has Shakespeare in it. Uh, it's sh obviously Stratford on Avon is where Shakespeare is from. And it's inspired, it's a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright. Voila. Oh. And the end pages are remarkable, right? <clears throat> All right, so this is the first up. Then uh, I'm doing a project with Leo of A Little Book Life, and we are reading through Anita Bruckner's oeuvre. Uh, and so I've been collecting these gorgeous editions. These are the Penguin Modern Classic Editions. And they're absolutely stunning. I'm not going to read all of these, but this is Fraud. This is Brief Lives. And I just love this one. This one reminds me of like kind of how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Shelter in place style. Uh, this one is a family romance. And this one is so cool. This is uh, Undue Influence, but it's a library copy from that from uh, Wales and there's this amazing uh, stamp I'll have to put an insert of the stamp so you can see it this name I have no idea how it's pronounced I need one of our Welsh friends to help me with it but I love this the way they've covered it it's protected it and it's in such amazing condition no marks nothing it's almost like it's perfect but I've seen that a few people have uh, checked it out you uh, know 2016 17 and 18 four times so I'm the lucky recipient of it now. So that's great. So I've been listening to Backlisted. So it's a podcast that goes back in time and, and looks at, at previous work that they want to uh, up level. Anita Bruckner is one of the people that made me think that I wanted to read Hotel de Lac and voila. Now, now look at me. So uh, there are a few books here from specifically from that. This is The Tortoise and the Hare by Elizabeth Jenkins. Look at that cover. So this one says, in affairs of the heart, the race is not necessarily won by the swift or the fair. Imogene, a beautiful wife of distinguished barrister Evelyn Gresham, is facing the greatest challenge of her married life. Her neighbor, Blanche Silcox, competent, middle-aged, and ungainly, the very opposite of Imogene, seems to be vying for Evelyn's attentions. And to Imogene's increasing disbelief, she may be succeeding. Sounds fantastic. Looking forward to that. This is also one that they did an episode on that sounded fantastic. Gorgeous cover, right? Uh, this is uh, Corregidora by Gail Jones. And let me read the back here. Uh, blues singer Ursa 
is consumed by hatred of Corregidora, a 19th century slave master who fathered both her mother and grandmother, charged with making generations to bear witness to the abuse embodied in her family name, Ursa Corregidora, that's a tongue twister, finds herself unable to keep this legacy alive while she is made sterile in a violent fight with her husband. Haunted by the ghost of the Brazilian plantation, pained by a presence of lovelessness and despair, Ursa slowly and firmly strikes her own terms with womanhood. Sounds very good. Then I have, uh, speaking of relationships with Midfords, uh, Evelyn Waugh, friends of Nancy Midford. I'm interested in, I'm going to be reading Brides Head Revisited very soon, uh, doing a buddy read of that. And I have his second one that I hear is, is Next Best. And this is A Handful of Dust. Uh, it says on the back, uh, after seven years of marriage, the beautiful Lady Brenda Last is bored with life at Heaton Abbey, the gothic mansion that is the pride and joy of her husband, Tony. She drifts into an affair with the shallow socialite, John Beaver, and forsakes Tony for the Bogravia set. Brilliantly combining tragedy, comedy, and savage irony, a handful of dust captures the irresponsible mood of the crazy and sterile generation between the wars. The breakdown of the last marriage is a painful comic reworking of Waugh's own divorce and a symbol of the disintegration of society. Well, there you go. Then I, on a little lighter and fun, more fun note, uh, I got this. This is the Antipoldi and the Vineyards of Etna. So I absolutely ate up the first of this series. It's Antipoldi and the Sicilian Lions. This is by Mario Giordano, and it's done in translation. The translator is... The translation is by John Brown John. Yeah, that's his name. Uh, so th this is just so much fun. The series is fantastic. It follows this older woman. She's a widow. She's German and has moved from Germany to Sicily, which has always been her dream. And she just wants to drink herself to death and, and have a view of the ocean and live in Sicily. <laughs> she is body. She's so smart, outrageous, uh, really takes no prisoners. Her husband used to be a police inspector. And so she considers that she's also uh, very versed in police procedures and gets herself in uh, a whole lot of trouble frequently. She also is not averse to taking photos of men in uniform because uh, she's also a little randy. I just, I find her hysterically funny. And uh, so I'm keeping this for a day when I need a little pick me up. I hear the third one is gonna be released soon. So that's exciting. For a little gothic twist, I read Laura Purcell's last book. I think it, it was like The Silent Thread or The Corset. And it was one of those that has those two names. <clears throat> and I heard from uh, Britta, I think Britta and Mel read this and said it was great. That's Britta Bowler from The Second Shelf and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. And uh, this is The Silent Companions. And so uh, gothic novel, can't beat it. Oh, even the back is just, is gorgeous. Let me read this one to you. Uh, newly married, newly widowed, Elsie is sent to see out her pregnancy at her late husband's crumbling country estate, the bridge. With her new servants resentful and the local villagers actively hostile, Elsie only has her husband's awkward cousin for company, or so she thinks. For inside her new home lies a mysterious wooden figure, a silent companion, that bears an unsettling resemblance to Elsie herself. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, yeah, sign me up. Who doesn't love a gothic tale? And then speaking of Britta, so Britta and I have read um, A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, and it it sparked in me this this memory of some of the things that I love, specifically the Cassandra tale. And so I, she mentioned this book and I had to go out and get it. This is Cassandra, a novel and four essays by Krista Wolf. Uh, and I think Krista Wolf is a German, yes, a sensitive writer of the Pierce Water, East German Virginia Wolf. 
So this would fit, I think, I think for my Read German Books 2020. Britta, you'll have to help me out. Let me know. Uh, but I'm fascinated with the Cassandra uh, story. So this I, I had to get. And also one of my favorite of the of the Greek tragedies was in the story of Antigone. And I found out that that um, Ali Smith did a story. And this is just this gorgeous, uh, gorgeous story. It actually has uh, illustrations in it that are just beautiful. So very happy to have a new Ali Smith in my collection. Let me talk about the influence that Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventure has on me. Uh, so she had mentioned, uh, she and then some a few other people, I think Teresa, who's a frequent commenter and friend of ours, uh, also mentioned this, I think. And this is the S.G. McLean's uh, series. This is the uh, Seeker series. I think this is the Seeker series. Uh, the Alexander Seton is the main character. This is number three. Yes. So the first is the Redemption of Alan Alexander Seton. The second is Crucible of Secrets. And the uh, Devil's Recruit is also one. This is a game of sorrows. So I'm trying to get this whole series. I, I, I literally cannot find these in the United States. I've looked. Uh, so I had to. I had to order them. And then I've become such a crazy fan of Higashino. This is Kiego Higashino, Journey Under the Midnight Sun. Look at that cover. <gasps> Gorgeous. Let me read the back of this. When a man is found murdered in an abandoned building in Osaka in 1973, unflappable Detective Sasagaki is assigned to the case. He begins to piece together a connection of two people who are inextricably linked to the crime, the dark, taciturn son of a victim and the unexpectedly captivating daughter of the main suspect. Over the next 20 years, we follow their lives as Sasagaki pursues the case, which has remained unsolved to the point of obsession. Oh. Well, number one, if it's Higashino, you know you're in for an amazing story. Let's see who translated this, if it's listed. Alexander O. Smith translated. Same translator as some of uh, Malice, which is uh, one of my favorites that I've read so far this year of Mysteries. And then here's another one that Mel... Uh, Mel mentioned loving, and I remember taking a note of this. The World My Wilderness by Rose McCullough. And I just remember seeing this cover and thinking it looked so precious. And this is a Virago Martin classic. Love those. Uh, the back says, Barbary Deniston spent her childhood running wild with the Maquis, experiencing danger, collaboration, and betrayal. But the war is over and it is decided that at 17, she needs to learn to behave like a young lady. Sent from her home in France to her barrister father in austere post-war London, Bob Barbary is an outcast, patronized by her civilized relatives. She is confused and unhappy. When Barbary discovers a flowering wasteland in the heart of the bomb city, she finds a sanctuary she needs. Here, in this echo of the wilderness of Provence, she can confront the fears and emptiness that have become part of her being. Oh, <laughs> I just, I want to read it now. That's how beautiful. Can't wait for that. Here are two others that uh, Mel is directly responsible for. I swear. Uh, this is uh, Kim Suk Shin. I'll be right there. I don't remember when she, I think she flashed this. Maybe it was on Instagram something, but I'm interested in Kim Suk Shin's work. So here's another one. This is translated by uh, Sora Kim Russell. Set in 1980s South Korea, amid the tremors of political revolution, I'll Be Right There follows Young Yoon, a highly literate 20-something woman, as she recounts her tragic personal history, as well as those of her three intimate college friends. When after eight years of separation, Yoon receives a distressing phone call from her ex-boyfriend, memories of a tumultuous youth begin to resurface, forcing her to relive the most intense period of her life. With profound intellectual and emotional insight, she revisits the death of her beloved mother, the strong bond with her now dying former college professor, the excitement of her first love and friendships forged out of a sense of isolation and grief. Okay, that sounds like a deep, a, a good crier 
<clears throat> now, here's another one she just commented on. This is The Wandering by Inten Paramaditha. Okay, and this is, I, I remember being so interested because she said it's almost like a choose your own adventure. I thought, what? So this one says, beware the gifts you accept, or so said your elders, but it's too late. You asked for the package, a present that comes with a curse. Demon lover has granted you a pair of red shoes. The most ingenious and unusual novel you'll read all year where you choose your own story. So it sounds fantastic. The way she described it sounds great. That back little blurb sounds fantastic. So we'll see when I get to that one, which, which I do, I keep meaning to say, I have come to the conclusion and I firmly believe this, that the act of reading is one type of hobby and the act of book buying is another type of hobby. They're on different timelines, people. There's no guarantee I'm going to read all of these this year, but they will be here when I need them. That's the important, that's the important part. So that's how I think of it. So I know there's some people who buy and they're only going to read that, that shelf. And, you know, I applaud you. Not me. That's not how I do it. I, I want to have these near because I'm a mood reader. So the mood will strike and I'll say, you know what? I want to choose my own adventure book. Oh, guess what? I have one here waiting for me. That's how I run. Okay. And then these um, two, uh, actually three, are inspired by, by Bert at Pastory Time. Uh, he, uh, he and Shawnee have talked about some of these uh, so the first is Otessa Moshfeg's Eileen. I just, uh, this cover just kills me. I think it's stunning. Let me read the back of this. The Christmas season offers little cheer for Eileen Dunlop. Trapped between caring for her alcoholic father and her job as a secretary at the boys' prison, she tempers her dreary days with dreams of escaping to the big city. In the meantime, her nights and weekends are filled with shoplifting and cleaning up her increasingly deranged father's messes. When the beautiful, charismatic Rebecca St. John arrives on the scene, Eileen is enchanted. But soon, Eileen's affection for Rebecca will put her into a, a crime that far surpasses even her own wild imagination. That sounds fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Eileen Moshbeck. So I think it's over. Yeah, it's right there. And I have McGlue, so I might just go on a little Moshbeck binge with those two. And then uh, I got The Polygot Lovers by Lena Wolf. Uh, this is translated by Saskia Vogel. And I, so I think that, um, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, Bert and Shawnee, I think that Shawnee was reading something by Saskia Vogel, really, really liked it, which led Bert to look for the companion piece to this. Uh, and so he read that and then he was looking for this one. Now I got this one because when I heard that there that he read number two before number one, I have, kind of am traditional like that. I have to read number one before I read the second. So I got the first one in the series. And this one is Polyglot Lovers. And this one is Eleanor is 36. She wears soft black sweatpants and a Michelin man jacket. She fights. Smart and unsentimental, she tries her hand at online dating, only to be stranded by a snowstorm with a literary critic. Cut to Max Lamas, an author who dreams of a polyglot lover, a woman who will understand him in every tongue. His search takes him to Italy, where he befriends a Marchesa, whose old Roman family is on the brink of ruin. At the heart of this literary intrigue is a handwritten manuscript that leaves no one unaffected. That sounds interesting. And then uh, this wasn't directly recommended by Bert, but I found this in a little, one of the little free libraries. And Bert reminded me of how much I really like Alice Hoffman. And so I found this in a little free library. This is The Dove Keepers. Now, this is the story of the Jews on the Masada, the mountain in the Judean desert. Uh, so this has some kind of ancient aspects to it and you know she has she always interweaves this kind of magical element uh so could be interesting and you know a little free library so why wouldn't I grab it right I did leave a bunch back there by the way 
And then someone had, had said that they thought I would love this. And I found it. This is A.S. Byatt's Still Life. And on the back, uh, oh, it's just blurbs. It doesn't say what it's about. Yeah, there's no, fortunately, there's no description on the back. It's just little blurbs. Uh, but I, I did really like Possession. And uh, this was recommended. I can't even remember what book I read that I really liked that they thought this would be a good uh, companion to. So yeah, that's all of my books that I that I bought recently. So I have a ton of reading ahead of me, which is good because I'm going to be spending all of my summer here. <laughs> but uh, I at least I'm I'm well suited for reading. Anyway, hope you're well. Thank you so much for watching this. And uh, let me know, do you have any thoughts? Uh, have you read any of these? Uh, any you recommend based on these? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you're staying safe. Stay inside um, or practice safe social distancing. Uh, don't touch your face. Wash your hands. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you later. Thanks. Bye.